I hope everyone see my screen. So uh, again, my like my topic is a synchro post introduction. However, I will have a small part of the first introduction to like I describe some basic things from a synchro that maybe uh, someone can not know. I don't know. So uh, like first of all, the synchro is not free at all. So uh, when we migrate and cover sync code to to a sync uh, code we need to remember that uh, we have a small overheads like loop cycles or coroutine also saving good states and consuming some memory um, and counting this we need to like understand when we use to seek when we use, when we should use a sync care so it's like unfortunately it's not always mostly we need to Use a sync IO approach when we have a lot of IO, so input output operations. Uh, estimated amount of operations can be very varied from, uh, like, it will depend on your server or local setup, but it's uh, always near like 60, 80 percentage from your code. Uh, if you have a uh, mixed uh, combination of cpu and your like bound operations at and you can limit your operations like to several threads it's it's better to do to, to use threads than a sync io unfortunately and when you have a cpu bound operations in python mostly you can just like you can use uh, strange things from uh from scientific python like Numba, but it's not not a topic of this uh, part. So uh, I have divided uh, my uh, presentation to three parts. It's child zone, younger zone, and uh, suffer zone. So ch like child zone, it's uh, is that part that you will you will face when you start using a sync code first. Uh, so first of all, you shouldn't forget background task tracking. Unfortunately. Uh, like I have a small code example, so you can see we have a one queued background task, and we have other tasks that uh, just put in this background task in the loop, so it will be executed somewhere. Uh, the main problem here is that we're losing any control of background task, and uh, if background task fails or if uh, something goes wrong, we will never know it uh, because it's just fired into loop and forgot uh unfortunately this is common mistake for for beginners in the synchro so like better to avoid it and uh, and next problem is over spamming loop with tasks so uh you should rem you should remember that uh when you return control to loop using await uh, that uh, loop will mm, check in all task and uh, if loop has like you no know, like thousands of tasks it can be really slow like for example if if a loop has like uh, thousand tasks it can take a minute like nearly minute to uh, check all of it and uh, spice overhead. So you should avoid over spamming task. Uh, so I am speaking about task, not coroutines, mostly because uh, each element of loop is a task. So uh, coroutine is a function that uh, mostly is a function that uh, was defined with a sync, I think def, and can be awaited, but uh, each element of the loop is a task. It's uh, mostly rapid future that uh, has some uh, applications to use, like callbacks. It can be canceled, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, like coroutines are less flexible. Also, if you see the coroutines executed. In the parallel, you should remember that they always tasks because uh, if you bound to one task, you can 
that you can parallelize. Task also can depend on each other in strange ways. Like if you using async await, it always creates tasks and also tasks sometimes lead to Helbeck health. Um, so uh, one of simplest suggested solutions for this part is uh, to use IO jobs. It's uh, basically a nearly standard library from IOLibs community at IO jobs allow you to create the scheduler. Scheduler uh, mostly use it for two things. First of all, you can limit jobs that can be executed at the same time. So for example, you can see here, I limited scheduler to 10 jobs. It means that only 10 jobs will be scheduled to loop and uh, rest of jobs will be waiting until some of these tasks will be executed. And also you can see exception handler. Uh, so this means that if some task inside scheduler will fail with ex exception, you can handle it. For So here, for example, you can see we will, can run this example and we can see that uh, we have, like we have some information that our job has failed. So it's all for this part and we go into the Yangsa. So uh, I guess after we figure out some problems with uh, organizing uh, tasks and coroutines, we need to understand how we can organize task, uh, your application. Uh, mostly if using some asynchronous framework like Flask, or sorry, not Flask, uh, FastAPI or Cynic or HTTP, you will be organized by task per request model. It's uh, very simple. And uh, I guess anyone should be familiar with it, but uh, in some cases you may need to organize your application different and there is a different approach to this like actor model when you see application like uh, small moving parts that interacting together with messages you can use event bus it's nearly the similar as an actor model but instead of uh, independent interaction between some parts you have centralized at event bus uh, there is a communication sequential processor maybe it lost near at some near at the nectar model but the most communication focuses on channels not in actors but uh, you need to understand like core principles because the approach is very different and there, like as there is no one good approach uh, they are have the benefits and uh, problems but the core principles are always stay the same you shouldn't have global state or shared state between independent part of your application because it will lead to many problems and also you should remember that asyncio still uh, contains some concurrent part so like because a lot of await can unfortunately cause some race conditions you need uh, and local state should be isolated always and uh, all moving parts of your application should be observable as much as possible and required so for example if you fire background tasks or you have a long running background task you should somehow monitor it restart it etc and also let's speak about uvaloop like some uh, some small introduction uvaloop is uh, another implementation of default async loop by default, asyncio using, if I remember correctly, mm, no, I can't remember how it calls, but it's some small loop based on Python and some C code. And and you will loop uh, uses uh, a loop from JavaScript wait uh, engine, if I remember correctly. So the most, uh, and it's fast like faster and and sometimes significantly depending on how you spend on event loops um, time but uh, you should remember like there is a three common problem with uva loop uh, basically it's uh, cannot be freely used with newer python version because it's always have 
some problematic crushes with uh, nearly Python. Like if if I remember correctly, for example, when uh, Python 3.8 was introduced, uh, Viva loops list lead to segmentation fault in some cases. So also Viva loop contain a lot of small edge cases that uh, I hope you will never face, but some people face it. It's sometimes catastrophical and also it requires C uh, compiler to be compiled. It's also can sometimes be a problem. So, and uh, when we are good, Young zone with finish, we will I will try to lead you to suffer zone. So suffer zone is about some uh, design flows or problems that you will face in a SYNCIO. And these problems cannot be like solved. They can also be that they they can be only known. So um well, first of all, <laughs> uh, here is a, some strange code example. We have database Postgres. Okay, give me a second. I need to start it. Got. So we have a connection to database Postgres. We will create uh, some example table and uh, we have two concurrent operations. One is uh, inserting data into database and one is selecting from this database some data already present in database and at first at first seem everything should be fine uh, we using here databases model it uh, wraps uh, some uh, async databases connection like async pg iom iomg and uh, sqlite so I guess when we run it, everything should be fine. But no, as we can see, uh, the insert logic fails with uh, cannot perform operation and other operation in progress. Uh, like this is an example from real life. When I sort, when I firstly saw it, I was like very terrifying. So what is the problem here? Uh, uh, actually, it's very strange, but a database using uh, the context bars to store the c c c connection so and uh, this task is sharing the context bar and uh, these two tasks with a center select sharing the same connection so uh, here we face the context bars problem uh, Context Wars mostly was introduced in Python 3.7 and uh, provide ability for you to store some context information in the same way that uh, maybe some of you used uh, trade, trade local. But uh, because tasks, like because you sp spun more tasks than uh, actually threads, you can face very different many different problems. Uh, in some cases, tasks will inherit context var from existing tasks. In some cases, not. You, in, uh, in different libraries, you can see many strange stuff that be stored in context var. Session example above, uh, tracing KZ, someone even stay, uh, say, flux in context var. So, you should remember that you have this storage mechanism and actually a wide amount of application using it's uh, i guess it's more familiar it's it's more popular than thread local uh, so you should remember about context work unfortunately so and uh, another big problem is cancellation uh, Sorry for interrupting. Can you clarify the part about context wars and what's that? Because like I, I personally didn't fully get that. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, did you familiar with thread local? Well, kind of. But I'm a trainee, so like you have to appreciate the fact that I'm not very much. Okay. Experienced. It's it's not a problem. Sorry for me. Okay. Uh, I will try to provide more context. Um, 
for example, here we can, uh, I will return to this code and uh, try to print uh, context var that um, uh, if I remember this how it should be going. Ah, sorry for this. Oh, okay, another one. So, um, the thread locals are storing variable per thread. So each thread have this variable and uh, it's not shared uh, between threads, but uh, in each thread you can see this variable and from anywhere. The context vars are nearly similar, but instead of threads, they are uh, using some concept of context. So if code was run it in this context, you can access to variable of this context at any place. And uh, this approach mostly use it for uh, some uh, like storing significant data, like you can see here, I printed the context for insert logic and select logic, and you can see that uh, it's similar because uh, async await actually share the context between uh, main task that was used to call await and uh, these tasks. So we can see the connection object here, uh, similar to this one. Um, I hope I, I answer your question or not. <laughs> well, kind of, yeah. No, thanks. And uh, the problem here is goes that uh, fetch all using the same connection as uh, here for execute many and the Postgres just kind of what you want from me, like select is not finished yet and you're using insert. So basically, as I get it, uh, the problem here is about uh, the context. So basically, it uses <laughs> it uh, each thread use it at the same time, and here we it goes the blockers uh, in between sharing uh, threads, so to speak. Am I getting it right? Uh, nearly similar. It's not a thread. It's uh, like uh, the problem that two tasks sharing one connection and uh, yeah, connection. Mm -hmm. If uh, like it's not like it's mostly strange because if you using a different uh, database connection pool, you will like expect that uh, connection call will always return the new connection that you can freely use, but sometimes it, it doesn't. Okay, okay, it makes sense. Thanks, much appreciated. Sorry. What would be the resolution? How how we can avoid this issue? Uh, there is a several approach for this. Uh, like uh, much simpler is just use better uh, library. Uh, like when I use this library, it was uh, two years ago, and I don't have any any different approach. Uh, but now you can use a SQL alchemy, uh, but uh, especially in this case, you can just uh, run different contexts from one task. So uh, you can, uh, that what I have done here, I, uh, I cannot uh, write it exactly now, but uh, I have just the copied context, like remove connection context from this context and uh, start insert logic with different context. If I remember, it's like, context run something like this mm -hmm. okay cool thank you yeah so and returning to cancellation so uh every task can be can we cancel it and the synchro uses very strange to cancel the task it just fires uh, a synchro cancellation error and side task but uh, unfortunately there is no guarantee that task cancel it or not cancel it. So for example, uh, here we can see some very strange uh, stuff that an expected child survive. So we can see uh, what, this code, what this code basically does. It creates a task uh, that uses a base func. Base, base func actually just, just fires two different tasks in weights. So, uh, 
in uh, like most of beginners and me also expect that we when you the cancel base funk that two inherited funk will be cancelled also because it seems like well they depend uh, but actually what's happened we cancel task task is cancelled but as we can see uh, child funk continues to function like uh, they print one and two for several time uh, so this is uh, unfortunately this is one of biggest flow of a SYNCO, as I think and uh, you need to be very careful this problem because uh, it's very problematic to avoid it and when it's happened it can lead to catastrophic problems uh, what you can do in this example you can accept instead of wait you can use gather because gather is cancelling and uh, also you can try to use a different uh, EOL, EO library as I know that uh, the Python community uh, using trial trial library to make cancellation more stable, but instead of it, it's not compatible with the SYNCIO, so it's not so good. Uh, and also different uh, approach. Sorry, sorry yeah. may I ask some question? Yeah, so, sure. Uh, that example with canceling task, is it uh, do you assume that it's rather a bad uh, approach or some uh, misfunctionality in library? Uh, it's design flow, unfortunately. Uh, like what I mean, that uh, mm, what uh, most of users can expect, that uh, this wait task should propagate cancel to mm -hmm. child funk, but it's don't. And uh, there is no um, like uh, library wide way to do this. So, I mean, this is only one example with wait. You can use uh, different, like you can use not wait, you can just create task and fire it. You can uh, do many different things here, but you cannot like cancel the branch of uh, inherited tasks. But if uh, another question, yeah. But if we loop through all the tasks using like uh, async uh, I all all tasks passing loop, will will we get all this uh, hierarchy of tasks and then we can just cancel them one by one? Yeah, because... you can. Yes, you can cancel, but you will cancel all tasks, not. Uh... Yeah, but I think I think it's not like. Uh, uh, a, a, a mistake in library design, but it's rather uh, a pattern we should follow. Like uh, we cannot uh, treat uh, only, we cannot work only with one task, but we should keep in mind that uh, there, there is a, this hierarchy and we should uh, keep in mind all these tasks in background and like cancel them, all of them explicitly. Yeah, but you will cancel all of them and we'll and what I mean, for example, we don't like if we start two base task here, for example, mm -hmm. we, can, we can just do this. And uh, after when I start it, we will have like uh, six tasks in a loop and we need to cancel only three of them. And uh, we don't have like a good way to figure out which task we, sh we should cancel. We can uh, use different approaches. We can uh, create our own uh, task uh, objects that will store some data. We can, uh, like, not using wait, we can use different, uh, we can use, like, gather that propagates canceling. We can uh, write it's my, like, own weights. But uh, what I mean basically that uh, some uh, different implementations of same approach using, for example, the cancellation tokens uh, that will allow you to uh, c control the cancellation out of box. So, you, so you don't need to keep in keep this in problem in mind and uh, uh, creating some uh, solution that will fix this. Okay, I see. Thank you. And uh, so another like. 
very similar example but different problem that someone can die too early um so uh, from this example it's uh you can't uh, see the problem because it's very straightforward but for example if you're using iosh ttp you definitely should know that uh, iosh ttp interrupts requests if uh, client cancels the request i guess this is only one uh popular http framework that do this uh, and uh, in this case it can be really problematic because you need to use iojobs shield to make sure the task will not be cancelled because uh, for example you even i guess you can't even uh, control when you will exit the task because like you will just fire the cancellation you can do something here to block cancellation but uh, you will still be interrupted at some some undefined point so if a uh, task potentially can be interrupt can be interrupted and, and uh, you need to figure out what to do with this you can use your jobs shield if i remember it should be your jobs okay HTTP shield. okay I, I even don't find this here okay sorry i, I can't find this example but you can shield this task from Canceling in the same approach that, uh, like, basically, it used the same approach that uh, you can see in uh, in last example. It will, it will just create another task, throw it in the loop, and will from this task will control another task. Something like this. Uh, maybe you have questions about this part. Or it's too complicated. Just, just, just a small question regarding all those examples. I, I see that you create task, but you don't uh, do any like uh, run run to complete or, or just simple run. Is it just for for the example purpose or um, like uh, this presentation is based on Jupyter and Jupyter internally running uh, a single loop so you mean i am don't starting loop or i don't use a wait uh i mean i i just read that recommended way is to run until to use run until complete or just a simple run from i think i was it uh does all all the magic uh behind the scenes so but i i, I just don't understand create task will will not wait for for it to complete it it doesn't block the main thread yeah but uh, you can await task if i remember correctly for example like this just i i think it, it's okay it's it's maybe for for this uh, snippets purpose but in, in i mean in production it it it's not a recommended way to run them uh, mostly what you're talking about like like run until complete will require to block the loop and also will uh, block the execution part so like uh, this all code should be like in production way they should be bound to like main function mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this will be main function and then i will write run until complete but uh what you like if i remember like no back to python 3.7 the create they think create task is what is was the only way to put task in background so like if you need fire task in background from different async task in python 3.7 it was the only way and a different approach using the same way just, just creating task and like throw it away mm -hmm. I see. and uh, like purpose of this example is just to throw task to loop not to wait for it okay okay i i see it's for for the presentation purpose i got it it sounds, it sounds like uh, we are trying to run salary, but on the same machine as we have, uh, as where we have a web server, right? Uh, 
it's depend on what you planning to do because uh, salary are not good for long running tasks and uh, sometimes no like with the syncio you can run small background tasks that will do some small jobs like uh, sending the statistic like for example uh, in django and flask you run sentry in different threads but with the syncio you can just create the sentry coroutine and just throw it to the loop so it will don't create additional threads but sometime will lead your performance but not critical so it's mostly a I, I guess it's mostly used for uh, background task in my cases, but uh, wait or like gather also will create task to parallelize. Like I'm not, no, I understand what why you mentioned salary, but salary are more about distribution, and uh, I guess I think I are more more about parallelization of I/O operations. Yeah, it's like. Why, uh, I that's why I asked because I just wanted to understand is it possible to distribute this system between multiple machines? For a Syncio, it's currently impossible, unfortunately. But you can uh, use the message broker, like, yeah, but like any is... message broker, and then uh, distribute tasks. But salary yeah. don't support uh, a Syncio currently, so unfortunately. Roger, thanks. Okay, so, and uh, I guess the most painful for me problem is not a sync AO operations. So, uh, here we have example of using uh, IO files. IO files is a pretty standard library for working asynchronously with files. And uh, we're creating, I have a small file, and we will read this file like uh, 20 times and it was like uh, like 0 0.26 second and we have the similar code with multiprocessing it use uh, multiprocess pool with uh, 10 uh, threads uh, process and we will start the ring and as you can see that difference are very significant like it's uh, nearly 10, 10 times faster than a Syncio um, reading. So why is this happening? <laughs> Mostly because IO files using internally the thread pool. So it's not uh, really any good async disk reading, especially in Linux. It's very complicated problem related to very different uh, kernel problems, etc. I am not still good familiar with it, but uh, the main problems that uh, due to some point Linux uh, doesn't have any like usable variant of disk, uh, like asynchronous disk operations. Uh, after 5.0 it has, but it's still not so fast as you want and uh, also for windows and mac os you also can implement some kind of uh, i think disk usage but it also will be not so fast as synchronous operation so as you can see uh i here using different library it's using it's uh, developed for linux and using linux asynchronous disk operations but even if uh these operations are, are synchronously, they are still sl much slower than using the just synchronous operations for reading files. So you, I, I guess the main problem here that you need to remember that uh, some operations that are called IO, so like input output operations, not always can be asynchronously. So this like some sometimes it can be problematic unfortunately so and uh, actually there is a lot more problems without examples but uh, like routine cannot be passed to different loop when it's creating it bound to loop so you can you can't just like uh, create the 
several loops and several threads and share between them a coroutine. So currently, you need to implement some kind of internal process communications like with ZMQ or etc. Uh, sometimes you need to mix the coroutine and generation and uh, generators, and it's also very painful to do. Uh, and also the most uh, like actual problem of past years for me is sync to sync and it's sync to sync problematic sometimes you need to implement uh, sync code that will call a sync code and it's uh, can be very problematic and a sync code to sync is also sometimes went to problems okay and uh, before we move into last section of presentation maybe someone have some questions Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Seems like uh, the problem with uh, with the split of base functions uh, because of two because uh, you run uh, in thread pool and uh, uh, from other yeah. side you were running it in uh, processes. Don't you think about it? Uh, you mean this part? Um, yes. Uh, yes, it's definitely it's, it's a problem, but uh, I guess if uh, some library will create a, a process pool, th this will be very, uh, very strange. But most of my, uh, like the, the main speech of this, that uh, the operations that uh, someone and I assumed that should be asynchronously internally, they are not asynchronous they are just paralyzed synchronous operations and uh, and in some point they will be much slower but uh, the most problem here is not with threads it's that io files uh, by default using four threads and i have used it like 10 uh, 10 processors so uh, like the most speed benefits come from here but this is still are not uh, like when i firstly uh, find this problem this is, wasn't not clear for me because like it wasn't any mm, warning when i using this library that in uh, like in documentation that watch out internally they are using the thread pool something like this but still if, if we talk about this particular library, if, if we just use, I mean, about this particular action, reading, reading and writing files, if we just use synchronous version, uh, so and compare, uh, I, I believe we still should have some benefit using uh, AIO files, right? Uh, if you will use the thread pool, uh, same as AIO files, I am not sure about it so uh like it's mm, it can depends on very different magic stuff but uh like the main problem here i guess that you will not know if any of your actual like a different cook coroutines will be executed at the, at the time you are reading files Okay, but but in the plain synchronous version, right? If if we talk about twenty files, if we just write them one by one, so yeah, sure, we... is sure. So... Uh, plain synchronous version will be like uh, terribly slow. I... Yeah, I, I mean, it's still significant uh, performance increase in, in in comparison with synchronous version. So it's not too bad, right? Uh, I guess like uh, if no, it's not too do but uh, they are creating several threads threads are leading to uh gil interrupts and uh, i i don't mean that this is bad of course you, if you need to read man, many files uh you will need some kind of thread pool but uh most my mostly my point was, was here that uh internally they are not using the plain uh, sync io library so you can expect some different problems here mm -hmm. that you wouldn't expect uh, from i don't know a, a network io libraries that using pure uh, sync io functions do, do you think they cheat <laughs> uh 
uh, they don't have any choice. <laughs> like, they are, as I know, for example, even uh, Golenk using the similar approach because uh, uh, the main problem that asynchronously this screening is catastrophically slow, unfortunately. Like, it's, uh, if I remember, someone told me that on Windows it's faster than on Linux, but it's still slower than just synchronous file reading. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you tried to rewrite your code, which uses, which used processes? And instead of processes, uh, use uh, threads. Yes, that's interesting to see results. Uh, okay, I don't remember how to call thread pool. You're on multi-threading. Ah, multi-threading. Okay, sorry for this. Threading. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, like, I was about to ask what about, like, event loops and concurrent futures, and could uh, them problems be sorted uh, by using them uh, libraries? Um, sorry, can you please repeat question? Uh, so, basically, like, there is a thing everybody, I reckon, knows uh, that uh, there is uh, first uh, event, well, it's not a library, it's just the function kind of, yeah, event loop. Uh, second of all, we've got concurrent futures that uh, helps us to uh, avoid all them blockers and stuff. Uh, so could them things uh, you were mentioned uh, before, yeah, about like blocking uh, all them problems and stuff sorted with uh, the concurrent features and the event loop. Mm. I'm still like don't don't get your questions. I, I believe concurrent feature is, is just a way of abstraction in in KO and task is kind of uh, future instance, so it doesn't really matter if I understand question so basically as i know uh for example uh, event loop helps you to uh, maintain uh like kind of no blockers approach because it uh, resolves it itself so like uh, this uh, thing about for example um uh, speed of uh, processing uh, io operations uh Again, as I understand, can be sorted with using event loop and multi threaded. Ah, yeah, I guess. Um, no, it can't because uh, file reading is the uh, um, current. No, I don't remember how it's called. Uh, it's this called. So, like, the file reading is the system call, and uh, there should be parallelized it with something like threads. Excuse me. Yeah. So basically. The main issue here, sorry for interrupting, is that you cannot, in Linux, you cannot really a file in non-blocking mode. And like everything else that we do here is basically mitigation of this issue. So what this IO files library does internally, that's like 20 lines of code, it basically creates uh, if we do it in concurrent futures in thread pool executor, effectively we're doing the same, but we are just having like a different abstraction. Uh, but whatever we do, we either are forced to like deal with blocking files either through threads or processes, or maybe like deal with this, like maybe internally. Uh, by just opening the file if we believe it's small enough, right? So it's always sacrifices. Well, yeah, it makes sense. But also I've heard, maybe I'm wrong, but um, multiprocessing is very ineffective, which I was surprised about so that in this particular case, there was like a tremendous effectiveness and uh, fast speed of the processing, the IO operation through the multiprocessing because they strictly don't recommend to use uh, mm. uh, multiprocesses for uh, IO operations. And it's uh, even like in documentation appears. So... Mm. Uh, I'm um, surprised. They don't recommend this mostly because they are have uh, running running executor uh, in a 
in loop uh, command. So this is like a synchronous example where do you need to use uh, uh, some kind of thread pool from a syncio. You should uh, use this from the loop object. Like it has loop run in executor or something like this that uh, you like should use for synchronization purpose. Another thing is that we probably haven't really test like test the time for creating the pool. I mean, preemptive uh, creating of, of the processes kind of makes it better. But if you were to like, create a process every time you want to delegate some operation, that would hurt. Um, so I have finally found the thread pool and it's still faster than uh, this example. Like not, not so much significantly, but still faster because it's using 10 threads instead of four by default, I guess you can see. But still, okay. okay, so do someone have any questions about this? We can move forward. Okay, we, we can move forward, I hope. So, and uh, so like, so uh, this uh, presentation was mostly like uh, pessimistic. So uh, I hope to, I will finish this in uh, the good way. So uh, basically current async uh, like popularity is rising as I know that uh, finally gRPC had the core support of async IO. And that SQL Alchemy finally have a better support for engines, and uh, like I mean official support. An official implementation was like two years ago, but finally had official support. And also now you can mostly use uh, any popular software with a Syncio, with a Syncio pure library like Kef, Kerberos, Q, Redis, uh, most known databases, uh, etc. And uh, also, there is some really brilliant tools based on uh, Syncio that uh, I guess most of projects can use or someone will use. The fastest API, I guess, is most growing library <laughs> for Syncio web services. It's uh, really fast for implement. It's based on, if I remember correctly, by identic for serialization. It provides open API documentations at and really very nice. And uh, maybe someone heard about Home Assistant, like the most, I, I hope the most popular open source implementation for smart homes, also using async internally. You can use Faust, the really nice library for Kafka streaming processing. And maybe some of you can also share some examples, that, like libraries that you know. I worked with a couple libraries uh, on Asenkayo. It's uh, mentioned uh, by you at the, at the beginning, Sonic, but with a uh, few last updates uh, of the major updates, uh, they bas basically uh, break everything uh, they created for the last few years. And with Sonic, we used uh, Gino. It's uh, Async implementation for uh, SQL Alchemy, and we got significant uh, uh, decrease of uh, time response. It could speed up uh, our system nearly 500 times. And that's uh, great thing. Sounds cool. And by the way, you can, uh, I have some experience with Fast API, and you can run it even in a lambdas AWS. So it's possible to like to translate it to lambdas if you don't have enough uh, powerful machines. Um, so maybe someone have any questions? I have planned uh, some strange example of live coding after this presentation, if anyone want to it. Uh, but maybe like first we need, like we can dedicate to questions if someone has something. Okay, so let's move to very strange live coding. Uh, so um, uh, here I have uh, 
Zagotovki, and uh, mostly uh, what I want to implement here, uh, like my task will be, I guess, very simple. We will create the buffer, the buffer that uh, will accept, will wait for 10, uh, 10 elements to arrive or uh, one and a half second, and then should put message forward. Like it's a, uh, will be a simple, a simple simulation of, I don't know, some different buffer in, I guess it sometimes happen in real applications. But like for my, case, for my case, it was calls. So I will need to like flash calls to database. So uh, this, uh, like this, a synchronization tasks can uh, be sometimes problematic with this, with pure sync io so uh, i uh, want to like share with you some really strange library that the basically i really like it's uh, io chan maybe someone familiar with it if you don't know well uh, so uh, first of all we will need a simple ugly producer that will just put task to some channel. So uh, the main approach of IOCHAN is, is mostly the copy of uh, Golang channels approach. So it have channels, channels have different, like you can put someone to channel, get someone from channel, etc. So uh, here we will have producer, it create only one channel. Uh, and producer will just put continuously unstoppable element to channel. And uh, I have added some random random to make sure that uh, in some cases we will have like 10 elements uh, per one and a half second. And in some cases we will have like um, not five elements, so we will flash it. So uh, what we can do here for synchronization, mostly uh, we need some kind of uh, things that will accept the files, the, the elements, and we'll combine it. Finally, like uh, hope. No, I can formal correctly. Okay, uh, so we will create this buffer collector. Uh, okay, I guess even I need. I forgot how to implement it. We need the collection buffer and we need to... Okay, um, we can have some buffer. While true, we will wait for element. Then we will, like, we will put input and output channels okay it will be in and out so we will if we get element we will put it as a buffer if element length More or equals than 10, we will put this element, put the buffer to our channel and then clear it. Um, so this is the element, chan, buffer chan. Uh, so if Hatsego is uh, is just uh, like doing the thing about putting this task to queue. So it's just uh, creating the task and and forgot it. It's like it defined it as a sync like Hatsego mostly because the after copied it from uh, Go, etc. Uh, 
אוקיי. Why does that work? Because I forgot something. And okay. Hmm. Ah, oh, don't have clear. Why? Uh, it is these have clear functions. Just checked. <sighs> it still just don't work as I want for some reasons. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I fork. Okay, it's in good. Here's buffer channel. Nice. It don't work because I again missed out something. If I remember correctly, maybe I need to do this. Yeah. Okay, this nice. I, I shouldn't done this. Yeah. So it's worked, but instead of clearing the array, I forgot that I need to. <sighs> yeah, sorry about this. I kind of stupid okay so uh, here we build a, like just a small buffer it's uh, collect 10 elements and throw it to the buffer it's nice but uh, I guess we need an additional approach for timeout or something so uh, fortunately uh, library has a very interesting approach for this is uh, you can use select uh, and it will select only from one channel so um, for example we will have our connection channel and we will have let's see timeout uh, what it does it's uh, just create message every one or half second and uh, for select if i remember correctly if I not, I will look the documentation. Sorry for this, <laughs> but I guess it should be nice. Okay, here is result and channel is the second. Okay, so. First of all, we need to be built. Uh, so. So first of all, we will need to some switch that will fire. Okay, awaiting is not again. Oh, sorry for this. I am again miscorrected. Miss await. And let's see how it works. Okay, so as you can see, it's timeouting at some point and then obtaining the products. So it's nearly worked. Uh, <laughs> But I guess uh, for this case, we need mostly some like something that will work much better. We need uh, that buffer that will be flashed at some point or it will be just uh, timeouted. So what we can do with this? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know any like reasonably good behavior, behavior except just using the class object. Uh, with empty buffer and with like self empty buffer self channel self buff channel uh, so uh, basically oh like Unfortunately, this is not a production production ready example, so I will not uh, write any code that will monitor 
all our function that uh, like we will move the buffer here and we also move the consumer at this at this object uh, but in production code you always need to monitor the long like basically the old tasks but exceptionally but essentially the long running task in uh, loop so like every of these tasks should be monitor it but i am not do this because this is just a small example <laughs> So we will add in buffer collection here, and then we will add in uh, self buffed set or timeout. I guess so we can even do something like this. I don't like to pay for these annoying problems. So here we obtain a problem, and here we solve. Um, like one nice thing about AsyncIO that actually you control the way that, like here, can execute something difference but i know for example that here no one will interfere my uh, variable exchange so i don't need any synchronization part or just i i know that i can write something like this one line instruction but i i, I don't like this approach because i mostly like the two different way so uh we need to fire Self consumer and self buffer collector. We're removing it from here. And we'll see will this work or not. Sure not, because I forgot something. Okay, it's very painful. Self is not defined where. Okay, it's also very stupid. Sorry for this. Run, take no positional argument, but I forgot again. Sure, this will never end. Mm. I'm really sorry for that I'm writing such a bad code presentation with such a amount, a lot of stupid errors. And yeah, again, here, I, I guess someone can ask me why I'm pressing that uh, refreshing again and again, like restarting because my task and not finish it because I just fire 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 to the wall. Okay, that's definitely not the thing that could happen. Should happen. <laughs> uh, I missed. Okay, I will not mess up it with buffer producer. Mm. Okay, it's very strange. <sighs> this definitely should not happen. Let's put the third. Yes, maybe this kind of timeout is very low. I need to like tense. Yeah, we, need, we definitely need ten seconds. Except of. Mm hmm. Okay, we somewhere, ah, I see.
so it seems to work, but no, it's again spam and the obtained one. <sighs> so it's very strange, you should, shouldn't do this. <laughs> It's like spamming the current buffer that empty and it's like pressing the else, but I guess um, I'm not sure, but probably, probably I forget that select have internal timeout. No, nope, shouldn't. Okay, this is very strange code. Mm. This will never end. Okay, some. <laughs> I, I guess we should end here because I, it's very strange problem, and I can figure out what's happening. Because timeout. Ah. Okay, again, sorry me for this. I'm just uh, stupid because I shouldn't do any of this again. <sighs> so um, the problem was in timeout because if I remember correctly, timeout will be closed after this described here yeah uh, so uh, the problem here was that uh, select like uh, like select also will be fired from close the channel and timeout closes after first fire so uh, here we have the work ex the work at example for of the sync and when if i like removing this here i hope that uh, we will see obtaining faster at some point oh okay uh i guess we will end here i i have done what uh, mostly what i want uh, maybe anyone have a questions before we end i hope this presentation was very like at some point useful for you that was interesting thanks yeah thank you too so uh, thank you all for for visiting for visiting Python community this day. Uh, have a nice day, guys, and 